How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, 11 a.m. West Coast time here on November 13th, 2025. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a uh, 1.6 earthquake up into the uh, Alaska area. Let's go ahead and check out uh, space weather activity here first. I know quite a bit of aurora activity stirring up once again out there across uh, quite a bit of states. That has since died down. Notice the aurora activity going away, but we did peak up there at the KP index of around 7 or potentially higher. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of aurora activity being viewed again last night. Not as intense as what we had seen the previous night there, but uh, yeah, kind of neat. Uh, I still got quite a few photos I need to go through. I'm going to put together a little montage of photos that you guys have been sending me, and I will share that here on an update in a future video. Uh, I got quite a bit to go through, so it's going to take me a minute. Uh, right now, the high-speed solar wind stream is still elevated up to around 781 on the uh, speed index there. Notice that it's really ramped up in the last few hours or so. We're, you know, that's pretty high. That's really elevated. Um, the density has gone down. The high-speed solar wind stream is. Um, see here is definitely up although this one here shown a little bit further down it looks like around 781 or so uh, so I'm not for sure did Kevin update this page it should be automatic there we go that was weird it had shown something else I don't know weird weird stuff has been going on with my computer um, I don't know if anyone else is having some issues or not but I had a, a video of mine an update video started playing by itself on the live stream last night um, not for sure what happened I hadn't played anything there was no open windows with a video playing but sure enough the audio of a recent update I was doing was playing over the live stream and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what it was it had to have been some kind of issue uh, but that has since been fixed I hope I hopefully that doesn't happen again uh, so wind speed elevated. I'm not for sure why it said 800 and something, then it dropped. That may have something to do with just the um, the refreshing of the page, even though I had just opened it. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look real quick and see how we're looking. See, back on this one, it's still showing way up there above 800, but the latest one, we're... Uh, we're back down there underneath 800. So things are going down. We still have kind of a northward... Uh, territory in terms of the BTBZ component that will suppress the auroras density is going down so it looks like for now the uh, brunt of all this space weather activity is going away only a couple C flares out there in the last 24 hours no M flare activity we still have an elevated threat while 4274 is facing the planet this is the latest imagery here it, it's kind of slow because it's a super high resolution radar uh, or uh, image here of the sun but back over here here's 4274 the source of uh, a number of X flares and uh, a lot of the uh, excitement here recently in the Aurora department quite complex there's a uh, definitely still some uh, magnetic complexity here with that sunspot so that will still pose a uh, little threat there for some X flare activity until it departs out there on the western limb and uh, after it does, we're going to be left with some uh, very quiet conditions out here on the Earth-facing side of the sun. So as of right now, flare threat still elevated at 55% chance for an X flare and flare around 85. And we're still getting hammered with some protons out there. Starting to go down a little bit, but look at that. Just What is this, day number three, day number four of getting hit with uh, charged protons there from the sun? Uh, roar activity overnight. It could kick up, possibly. Uh, I believe this is a little bit on the older side here. Maybe not updated yet, but Kevin will get to it. Uh, but not a whole lot uh, in terms of future Aurora activity for now. Uh, earthquake activity. Uh, you know, here's another thing, right? Where's our big uptick? Where is it? Wow. So the largest earthquake so far today and after midnight is only going to be a 4.8, not even a five pointer yet. This five pointer was actually from yesterday. I think we only had one or two five pointers well below average in terms of your daily 
uh, earthquake counts out here, in, you know, as far as the world goes. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> I would expect these last couple days here, you know, getting bombarded by space weather to uh, talk about sixes, sevens, maybe even another mega quake somewhere, but not even close, not even a slight uptick. If anything, it's, sur it's suppressed the earthquake activity. And I'm not lying to you, the, the maps, I've been watching my videos, I talk about how, uh, you know, space weather activity does, I think, play a part in the earthquake activity here on the planet, but not with this major event, and it was a major event. Where's the big earthquake activity? And you can't say, yeah, it's going to be uh, three weeks down the road, we have to wait for three weeks. You know, that's like a, an unusual long window of opportunity when you're trying to... Um, compare space weather activity in relation to earthquake activity you just can't do that uh, so i haven't seen it not no big uptick uh, i'm more leaning along the lines of uptick when we have a massive coronal hole facing us that seems to stir stuff up not due to the high speed solar wind stream that's floating out and not when it hits the planet because we've been just slammed with a couple different large cmes and nothing's happened uh, but it's more so the magnetic lines that shoot out here directly that uh, could alter or affect here the plate tectonics on this planet. But that's still questionable. We do have this one, 95. Uh, it should be facing us right about now. Here's the latest imagery. You can barely see it, but the other one I showed you there in the yellow, it's behind a day. So this one here is currently facing us. Let's see what happens uh, today. But it's not a big one. It's not even really center disk of the sun that should be right around here but we'll watch it and see what happens west coast activity here um not a whole lot going on up through washington and oregon We've got a big old storm happening out here across the west coast picked up almost an inch of rain here overnight and this morning already um there's that earthquake from yesterday right on the cascadia subduction zone no new activity to report here for now the bay area a couple smaller quakes see what we got for 2.5 and above. Wow, you got a pretty good cluster going on down here. Now, that's that's something to talk about, but I, I don't think that's related to the, the space weather activity. That's just, you know, Southern California has swarms, and then occasionally we get this interesting earthquake activity just off this very locked area of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Started getting hiccups, but I'm trying to squash that. Um, there's been a number of twos here, it looks like, above 2.5. Got one over here along that San Jacinto fault zone. And, yeah, kind of scattered out and about here. Even one, another one off the locked area of the San Andreas Fault. We had one yesterday here as well. Um, I don't see any huge swarms for now. But um, the San Andreas Fault, that could go at any time. It's been really uh, building up some momentum here for... This segment down here over 300 years, this little segment up here, um, I can't remember the exact number, but it's up there. And it's up there so much that we're in the reoccurrence interval window uh, for another large quake. But really nothing big going on out here for now. Yellowstone National Park, super volcano, no uptick in terms of earthquake activity. We'll go double check the Yellowstone uh, seismograph stations here and see what we have. On this rainy and windy Thursday. I like it. My kind of weather. Um, yeah, this is the 13th. This is the correct time. So we're caught up with that. A couple earthquakes there yesterday. Some more late last night. A couple more smaller ones this morning. But really nothing big. These are, And they're actually reporting the majority of these small ones. Even the zeros. <laughs> so a round of applause for that. That's cool. I like it when they're reporting all the earthquake activity because that, you know, it's it it's better that way. That way we can see where things are actually happening. But there's really nothing big happening. These are all, in fact, below the 2.0 threshold. Some, and the majority, even below the 1.0. So really nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Texas oil fields, no uptick. Just the typical daily earthquake count. Uh, what do we got going on up here? Way up north near the Davis Strait. Two earthquakes of a 4.8 and a 4.6. Oh, man, I don't recall the last time I seen earthquake activity up there. 
In fact, uh, not too much happens up there. If you look at the um, historical model here, 1900 to 2015, there's not even one above the 4.5 level in this area. Way up north here. So, yeah, a little interesting activity. Nothing big, just some unusual movement out there. Uh, let's see what else we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. No major uptick that I'm seeing across the uh, planet for now. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, we still got that, you know, a little bit of swarming going on out there around the Turkey area. The Cyprus region, the Mediterranean area has been acting unusual here in the last several months because you have to go back to... Uh, the Santorini earthquake swarm, or around that area of the Santorini volcano, that had thousands and thousands of earthquakes there in a, in a couple months, or even a month period, I believe it was. And that died off with no big event. And then uh, now we've got swarms going on here around Turkey and the Cyprus area. Uh, I still think this area is going to see some larger activity here soon. What it is, I, I'm not 100% sure what it is yet but it's i believe it's leading to a bigger earthquake in the area i just have to watch it uh, closely because that's just an unusual amount of earthquake activity but yes they had some six uh, two sixes out there in turkey in the last few months but the swarm should have died out it's if anything it's increasing it'll die off like like it is today a little bit a lot of older rings there but then all of a sudden we'll just swarm again and then we'll get new areas swarming around the area so pretty crazy um, newer activity today, uh, we got one up here, maybe section E on the Nankai trough, little three pointer, Japan's still seeing some movement. Oops, let's go back here. I did not mean to do that. Been pretty active out here along the Japan trench, surprisingly. Uh, so that tells me that the accumulated slip rate is, I think it's increasing out there compared to the normal rate. That's why we're seeing these large earthquakes. It, they just had a mega quake out here, you know, back in 2011 along this area. So it's interesting to see further large scale movement uh, just a short time later. Uh, but yeah, 6.8, 6.4, 6 pointer. Uh, latest activity here today, nothing. I don't see anything showing up here today. All these are from yesterday. Maybe a couple smaller quakes in there in the three range. Still watching the Nankai Trough, though. That's building up some steam. A little bit of activity around the Philippines southward into the Indonesia area. Um, but, uh, man, just not a whole lot happening out here. Alaska fairly quiet. New Zealand quiet down there. Some deeper activity across the Tonga area, but that happens on any given day. South America, uh, yes, there's a number of quakes, including a couple fours in there. Slight uptick here, I would say, but nothing major. Just a, uh, you know, just a typical day out here for earthquake activity. Nothing along the lines that would tell me that, man, this solar storm did a number on increasing earthquakes, because it has not. Seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet. Let's go see what's going on there for the asteroids. See if anything's stirring up out there in space. Uh, wow, that one's coming pretty close. 22-foot bus size asteroid, 137,000 miles. That's so definitely within the Earth-Moon distance. Uh, but I would say we're fairly safe there. Even at that level, we've seen a few closer ones this year. Uh, this one's fairly close as well, 11-foot. A lot of these, in fact, all of them are newly discovered out here. I don't see anything of close, super close proximity or impact potential. Um, and uh, nothing major in terms of size either. Storm Prediction Center, you know, not a whole lot for severe weather right now. Just some general thunderstorm activity out there across California. Yes, uh, getting a whopper of a storm system. Southern California is going to get in later tonight as that low pressure system moves south here and taps into some of that uh, atmospheric river is what they call it. Um, so we'll pull up the... Uh, Southwest here, there's our massive low pressure. This isn't happening right now. That was overnight. Uh, the brunt of that moisture has moved kind of east of me up into the Sierra. It'll clear out a little bit later, probably stay cloudy, but uh, more rain will loop back into the north, wrapping around that low pressure system here. 
Uh, Southern California going to get a pretty good deal on moisture. Look at that. Some of those rates in the red out there. Uh, so we're talking about inches of rainfall in a short amount of time period. There we go. Pushing that back up north. Some more rain here, it looks like, for uh, early Monday morning. That's next week. And then behind that looks like another one, Southern California. Southern California is going to get uh, quite a bit of rainfall. During a La Nina season, which we're in right now, most of the rain normally stays north, about San Francisco northward. But Southern California getting in on some uh, moisture here. Uh, you know, it's not every La Nina or El Nino pattern is going to be the same. It's going to variate quite a bit. Uh, but it's good to see moisture uh, being uh, kicked out down there because they definitely need it. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what we got for anything. Check out the five to seven day quantitative precipitation forecast here. Um, decent, pretty decent out here across Southern California. Look at that. Some of those areas may see up to seven inches of rainfall up in the higher elevations there around those, um, maybe some of the burn scar areas as well. They're getting, uh, some flood warnings or flash flood warnings down there once that uh, kicks in because of the uh, burn scar activity from the previous fires. But it looks like quite a bit of precipitation out here across the majority of the country here in the next, uh, this is a seven day quantitative precipitation forecast. Not so much out there across Florida, but hey, I, you know, they get rain like all summer, all spring. So. trying to think if there's anything else out here folks that uh we need to chat about i did see some severe weather popping up maybe down the road this is a experimental here from uh this website niu department of uh, geographic and atmospheric sciences potentially down the road here supercell composite a little on the elevated side i would say across texas louisiana uh, that could be a severe weather uh, potential. This is a week two accumulated model, uh, but that's uh, it. Does look like here over the next couple weeks, some decent chances there of severe weather across the Gulf Coast states, at least Texas and Louisiana region. All right, uh, I think that's it for now, folks. Um, like I say, no major events happening. I may be eating my words later. I guess we'll see, but you know. That space weather activity has been going on now for almost like three days straight. And I have yet to see an eye opener out here for elevated earthquake activity. You know, I, I look at these all day long, every hour, every minute of the hour. And when you look at something long enough, you'll see trends or you'll see unusual activity. The only thing unusual is up here across that region. But, you know, period periodically we'll get unusual activity, but I don't think it's because of the space weather activity all right have a good one we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh thursday night update still working on putting all the photos all of the photos into uh i, I gotta at least get them marked on the location because it does no good just to show a bunch of pictures i need to include the location of uh where those pictures were taken so i appreciate it got quite a bit we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening have a good day